Good morning, everyone. This is Dr. Valenti. Today, I am presenting the first of three video tutorials we will create. The topic will be the TRIOS scanner. The TRIOS scanner is an intraoral scanner for dentists, and it is arguably one of the best performing machines available on the market today, both in terms of hardware and software. We will begin with the first video, where I will explain the basic settings for using the TRIOS. We will perform an initial scan to explore the potential of the TRIOS, particularly in its software, with a straightforward initial scan. In the following three videos, we will delve into using the TRIOS for scanning a tooth prepared for a single crown. And in the third video, we will demonstrate the process of make a scan for a single crown on implants. Once the TRIOS uh, software is opened, the first available screen that will come up will be this one with the patients on the left. Before we start a new case and explain what the settings are to start a new case, let's go over the initial settings to manage as far as TRIOS is concerned. Let's click the settings icon with the settings wheel. And we go to a whole series of submenus. There is a general menu that covers the information related to three shape support and the use of the on screen keyboard. We will also cover some user specific settings. Typically, the three shape specialist who installs TRIOS for you will assist in managing these settings. In a dental office with multiple users, there will be multiple profiles, each tailored to individual preferences. For instance, users can set their preferred shade guide. You will manage the name to your liking. The advice I give to Italian users is to use, as far as the user's name is concerned, the doctor's first and last name, and possibly the medical association number. This way, your digital prescriptions will be legally valued because your number registration will be present. Additionally, there are settings related to geographic preferences, language, and tooth numbering methods. For instance, you can choose between FDI and universal numbering system. I personally selected FDI and opted for the English language. Now let's go into the clinical aspects. These are settings that the three shape specialist will certainly assist you with for optimal usage. Moving on to the scanner's practical usage, let's explore the system settings. Within this category, there are two options, the connection option and the performance check option. I strongly recommend periodically using the performance check to ensure that your computer and consequently the hardware running TRIOS are functioning correctly. Uh, let's go to the scan settings and then the actual scan settings. We have the option to uncheck the insane mode. So it is an option that speeds up the scanner performance a lot, but it must be supported by sufficient PC hardware. I always recommend using this feature to speed up scanning. Artificial intelligence can also allow the scanner software to recognize soft tissues such as the tongue and cheeks and eliminate them automatically during scanning. When using the TRIO scanner, we have the ability to integrate assistance for cavity detection. You can flag it if needed, and if no longer needed, you can unflag it and use it as required. As mentioned earlier, in this part of the menu, we can also decide which shade guide to use. Here, you can see that we have various options available. Personally, I prefer the classic Vita shade guide. 
The byte adjustment management is a setting that not only exists in the general scanner settings, but also comes into play during the scanning process itself, as I will demonstrate later. In this option, there are two types of byte adjustment, one for intersections and the other for no adjustment. I recommend conducting some test runs in collaboration with the lab to determine which setting best suits your clinical results. Typically, I leave this adjustment on the adjustment by intersections option, you can also select the color for the holes left by the scanner. These holes may appear in areas that haven't been adequately scanned. I personally prefer to color them green. When it comes to the zoom level of the scanner, I leave it on automatic. I don't make any changes. Additionally, there are other settings that I personally leave at their default values as the software sets them for me. For instance, the option to have a button on the screen that can activate or deactivate the scan during the scan process itself without needing to use the scanner's hardware button. Also, Having the timer, scan time, and the number of images displayed can be valuable information during the scan. Another important option at this stage is whether to include patient-specific motion, essentially what we refer to as dynamic occlusion in the default workflow. I recommend enabling this option so that you can include dynamic occlusion in your workflow after static occlusion. You can also set the range for patient-specific uh, motion bite contacts, which can vary between 8 and 200 microns. To start with, I suggest keeping it at 40 microns, and later you can assess whether to adjust this value. Moving on, there are sound indications, allowing you to use auditory cues that provide feedback on how the scanner is performing. I strongly recommend using the sound feature as it is very helpful during the scan. It enables you to avoid constantly looking at the screen and rely solely on the scanner's sounds to gauge the quality and speed of the scan. Another noteworthy option relates to the diameters of the holes. This is a crucial setting because it determines the diameters of the trimming cutout. My advice is to set these values to zero. This means that the scanner will automatically create a cutout in the transition between the provisional and final scans. I recommend leaving it at zero so that you can manually customize the cutout for the provisional or mucosal scans later on, implant gingival emergence profile. To then take the impression of the tooth abutment itself or the scan abutment. By setting these values to zero, you'll create a custom cutout. If on the other hand, you decide to input four or six millimeters, the scanner will automatically generate a hole with a four or six millimeter diameter. The issue with this approach is that the hole is often not centered on the abutment, resulting in asymmetrical cutouts. Therefore, my recommendation is to set these values to zero for both anterior and posterior preparations. This applies to the cutouts for the pins as well. It's advisable to set those to zero. This way, you can tailor the trimming of the scans 
to suit the specific clinical situation you encounter. Another crucial function is the option for wireless scanning. Some scanners offer both wired and wireless capabilities. And depending on your scanner model and the situation, you can choose to enable or disable wireless use. In my case, I have a wired scanner, so I won't be using the wireless option. A significant feature is the tip info option. The Trios 4 model includes a sensor in the tips that is not present in the Trios 3. This sensor allows the scanner software to keep track of how many times a particular tip has been used, as you can clearly see in the screenshot I'm presenting. For example, it shows that the tip has been used nine times and recommends using it for another 18 times before the next calibration. This information is crucial. My advice is to calibrate the scanner in the morning. The dental assistant responsible for assisting you during the scanning stages, who is also responsible for managing the scanner in the sterilization or cleaning area, should perform this calibration as soon as the practice opens for the day. The calibration involves attaching the calibration tool to the TRIOS insert and following the on-screen instructions to perform the calibration. I recommend doing this every morning. We also have the option to enable color measurement by checking or unchecking this box. This is one of the most exciting features of the TRIOS because it allows us to provide color information about the teeth to the dental lab. In addition to the advice to check and calibrate every morning your scanner, I invite you to check periodically, so weekly or every two weeks, if there are software updates. Usually the TRIO software reports the presence of updates. However, a check, let's say regularly, can avoid you from skipping some update or delaying some update. So in this way, he starts connecting with the serve and it will tell us if there are updates available for the TRIO software. Under Connections option, you can find dental lab or clinicians connected with you. Or you can add a new connection by entering the name and details of a lab to send the scans through 3Shape Communicate software, which allows direct communication between the dental practice and the lab. You can add, delete or edit any labs in the list. 